Dave, you work on governance. I think one thing that's happened a lot in both ecosystems in the past year has been has allowed skeptics in the media to like latch on like the failure of decentralized uh, systems in right. uh, like public debates. Right. It allows people, it's people say, oh, it's decentralized. So then how come there's these people in China and these few developers that are making decisions? Um, and but are they? <laughs> so the question was about governance and the, the governance problems and also the fact that governance problems within this space give opportunity to critics to point and, and laugh, right? Is it really decentralized if there are these? Is it really decentralized or not? Well, decentralized isn't a Boolean. Decentralized is a range. Is it much more decentralized than any other system we've built before? Yes, it is, including its governance. And, and the fact that there is a bunch of developers who write code and a bunch of miners who mine stuff, that doesn't mean they have control. And you may not notice that until something goes wrong or until there is a highly contentious issue, and then you discover how little power both developers and miners have to affect change. Right? They find themselves in a situation where they want to offer a straightforward, direct, and simple solution, and the system won't let them do that. Governance in these systems is tricky. and The reason it's tricky is because we're making trade-offs. The trade-offs are we don't get simple, easy, and quick solutions. We get liberty. And that's, a, that's an explicit trade-off. If you want quick, simple, easy solutions, you elect a dictator. The trains will run on time. And if the biggest criticism you can make for the decentralized system is that trains don't run on time, then you're missing the point. Because sometimes the trains run on time, but their destination is a death camp. <laughs> <laughs> and the most efficient operation you can build is an efficient operation for killing people. Governance is a tricky thing. Democracy is incredibly inefficient. We practice it anyway because we appreciate the trade-off that it gives us of self-expression, self-determination, freedom of association and religion, consciousness, liberty. Governancing these network-centric systems is a trade-off. It allows us to create systems that are open to innovation and access without permission. It allows us to build systems that exhibit a very large degree of autonomy and censorship resistance. And the price we pay is that our debates are loud, they are messy, and sometimes they don't end. Because there is no one in the room who can say, I have heard everybody's opinion. Thank you so much for participating. Now, what we will do is... <laughs> right? That is how corporations run. That is how governments run. That is how many things run. We have tried that. If we wanted that kind of money, we have that kind of money. We all get in a room, we talk, we express our opinions, and then Janet tells us what the interest rate is going to be. That is the bottom line. And If you don't like it, opt out. I don't know. Put all your money in crazy magical internet money. The bottom line is, this is not an accident, it is an explicit trade-off. Efficiency is the price we pay to buy liberty. And I will pay that price every time, because guess what? I can apply engineering optimization to efficiency. And Bitcoin is the first time I have been able to apply engineering optimization to liberty. And that is awesome. And so is Ethereum for the same reason. That is the promise of the open, decentralized blockchain. There's still a lead developer though that can make final decisions. Um, Not really. They can make limited decisions about what they include in the code, and if you don't like it, you don't run their code. <laughs> Which lead developer is in charge in any of these systems? Well, you can have, you have a lead developer over core, for example, and certainly what happened with Ethereum and hard fork, right? There was a lead developer that made a final decision and to change their own code. I mean, Gustav was up here just a second ago showing us how the loyalty that the miners were willing to give the lead developer of 
the Go version of Ethereum was about an hour. And once the price started dropping, they all suddenly became parity fans. <laughs> <laughs> In blockchains, you can have opinions, or you can continue to make money. And that's the game theoretical model. And if your opinions get too strong, you stop making money. And then your opinions get very soft indeed. You can say that with currency, though, too, right? If, if Janet Yellen makes a decision that, that people don't agree with, you'll go to the RMD. And I mean, you certainly have to have You can. Yeah. I can. Ask an Argentinian if they can. Right? So the truth is, for 5% of the population, you, under very limited circumstances, have that option. The other 95% of the population of this planet simply does not have that option. 